All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about function composition. Now composition of functions is very similar to the composition of just regular relations that we talked about before. But let's say I have two functions. Let's say I have this function g defined from s to t. And I have this function f defined from t to r. Then putting these together, I can create a composite function. It's going to be f composed with g. And this is going to be defined from s to r. Now this follows along with the composition that we learned about with relations. What I'm doing is I'm going through the function g first from s to some element in t, some little t. Then I'm taking that same little t, and I know that that's going to be defined in my function f because t is in t. And so I'm going from that little t through the function f to r. So I'm reading it from right to left, going from little s all the way to little r. And so this is going to be a function defined from s to r. So we can think of it as kind of performing um, g first and then performing f on the result. So in other words, I can think of the composition f composed with g of x. This is going to be the same thing as f where I'm plugging in g of x for that particular x. All right, it's the same thing. I'm just performing g first and then I'm taking that result or that image of x in g and that's this, g of x, and I'm plugging that into f and getting a new image, f of g of x. Now, for this to be defined, I need to have that every value in the range of my g for whatever domain I'm using is a value in the domain of f, right? So we have this criteria that the domain of a composite function, the domain of f composed with g, this is going to be equal to the values of x, and this is the largest possible domain, of course, the values of x, where x is an element of the domain of g, and g of x is an element of the domain of f. Right, I have this restriction. So this is the largest possible domain I could have. Of course, we can always define this on a smaller domain as long as everything in that smaller domain satisfies this criteria. Um, but I really just need every image g of x just needs to be a value that f is defined for, right? And if g is just, if the codomain of g is t, then that's going to be no problem. Sometimes we'll have codomains of functions that are larger, so we just make sure that the range of g is a subset of my domain of f. Okay. Now, since functions are relations, we do have an associative property, but we do not have a commutative property. And what I say is that if, let's say, uh, f, g, and w are all functions, and this composition is defined, say I, can, I have f composed with g composed with w, that's going to be the same thing as f composed with g composed with w. Right, this just follows just from the fact that they're relations. And we talked about how relations are associative. It doesn't really matter. I could compose G and W first and then plug that into F. Or I could just plug W into the composition F composed with G. And we'll have the same function. I'm going to go ahead and give a little diagram about exactly kind of what's happening here. So let's say I have these three sets. And these are the sets in the function that I've defined up here, uh, g and f. So this is my set s, this is my set t, and this is my set r. Now if I have some value in my set s, let's call it x, I'm going to have an image of x over in t, and that's going to be g of x. And g is the function that relates x over here to g of x. This is my function g g is mapping x to g of x. Now corresponding to g of x, because f is defined from t to r, I'm going to have some value over here that's the image of f on g of x. And I can go here from g of x, I can take my function f and it's going to bring it over here and map this g of x straight to this image f of g of x. 
Now, what the composition of functions does is it kind of cuts out all these little steps and it creates a brand new function that goes straight from S directly to R and maps X to the image F of G of X. So this mapping here is F composed with G. We're just kind of bypassing this middle set and we're creating a new function that doesn't rely on us doing all these steps, but that we can just go directly from our um, domain of G to our codomain of F. And that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's what composition is. And in the next video, we're going to talk about one-to-one -one and onto functions, talking a little bit more about that distinction uh, between a codomain and a range, and um, using that to um, talk about these qualities, the one-to-one -one quality of a function and the onto quality of a function, and how that's useful. We'll see you there.